Today's video, I check out this Maddox uh, combustion leak detector and why I'm using it. Hello and welcome to ET Garage. I'm Eugene Tordo and uh, today's video, I am going to check out this uh, Maddox combustion leak detector. You get these at Harbor Freight. I will leave a link in the description box if I remember. And when you buy this, you also need the leak test fluid, which is sold separately. Yeah, so uh, when you buy it, make sure you get the test fluid. Uh, reason I'm using this is I have a coolant leak that I can't find. It's a real slow leak. And uh, I want to eliminate that it could be going into combustion chambers. I don't see any indication that it is that it that you know like i got a leaky head gasket or anything like that but i always wanted to try one of these anyway and uh i'm gonna go ahead and try it so you open it up it will come with this apparatus in this little bowl and the instructions and like i said you gotta buy the test fluid separately um, basically what you're going to do is remove coolant from your reservoir so you have a because you don't want any coolant getting inside here you just want gases so you got to remove uh, it says to remove something like three inches of coolant if you can do that you might have to drain your radiator to do that um, and then you fill it with to the fluid level line with this fluid Place this in where your radiator cap would go. Press it in there real good. Engine running and your engine has to be fully warm. In other words, it has to be warm enough where the uh, thermostat is open. And uh, after you place that there, you place this bulb there. And with the engine running, you would then squeeze this like this. I believe it says for up to a minute. And that would suck in the gases into here. And if there's any combustion gases in it, it'll change this blue fluid to yellow. So, uh, this should be pretty quick and easy, I hope. This is my uh, 90C4 Corvette that I'll be doing it on. Like I said, I'm, I'm having some issues with it. And one of them is a uh, very slow coolant leak that I can't find anywhere. So, I'm going to eliminate that it's a head gasket, I hope. I don't see, like I said, I don't see any other indications that that is the problem. But you never know. So... Going to uh, move the camera around, start the car. I already got it warmed up, so uh, it shouldn't take too long to warm up a little bit more again. Uh, and I'll probably do a voiceover on the rest of this video. So let me move the camera, uh, camera around and we'll get going on it. All right. The engine's warmed up and running, and you place that in the rat where the radiator cap would be. Make sure, of course, like I said earlier, you drain uh, about three inches of coolant out before you even start the car up and warm it up. Like I said, put that uh, device in there and fill it to the fill line. And then after that, all you have to do is uh, put the bulb in there and start squeezing and sucking in the gases from the combustion chamber. Or, well, not from the combustion chamber, but from the coolant, uh, the cooling system. Do that for about a minute, and uh, I did have problems with that bulb. Uh, I had to end up pulling it out, I believe, and then squeezing it, and then putting it in. It just, uh, I don't know if there was suction inside the coolant system from the coolant level being so low or what, but it uh, took a little playing around with to get it to uh, suck in air. I ended up taking it off eventually and putting it back on. And squeezing it again and get the bubbles out but uh, yeah you do that for about a minute and then when you're done uh, just turn uh, remove it and turn the car off and you're set to go okay that went pretty well I did have some problem with this uh, bulb like it would stay it was almost like it would uh, create a suction in here and had a hard time doing uh, 
pulling the uh, bubble gas bubbles up I ended up having to take it out squeeze it stick it in and go like that several times but uh, it went well the fluid did not change color which means I am good as far as uh, combustion gases after you're done with this uh, you're supposed to dispose of the fluid that's in here, the uh, test fluid, according to state and local regulations. I have no idea what's in this fluid. There's no ingredients on it. Um, so, you know, just uh, dispose of it, I guess. Um, one thing it does say, after you're done with this, rinse it out with clean water and dry it. Uh, and then put it away for storage to the next use. This, see, like for a DIYer, that's only going to use it once like my, me, uh, I am. Uh, it, may, it may not be worth it to buy this. It's uh, anything, it's a peace of mind. Um, I guess I could loan it out, you know, someone local. Maybe I'll put it on Facebook Marketplace or something uh, that I, I will loan it out for like $5 a day or something. They'll have to leave a deposit. And, uh, and then they can just come pick it up and test it out or whatever if they need it instead of going out and buying a kit. I don't know. Let me know what you think down in the uh, comment section. And I could just turn around and sell it. Or just stick it on the shelf till if I ever need it again. Uh, just like a lot of my tools. But, uh, I do need to dig into the Corvette, that is the uh, 90 with the uh, tune port injection, uh, and I need, I'm getting a lot of valve train noise, it's running rough through the entire RPM range as well as idle. Um, I've already been through the ignition and the fuel injector, so I've already eliminated that as best I could, I think it's mechanical. and. To remove the valve covers to inspect the valve train on this if it was stock i'd be able to do it without removing the upper intake manifold but this isn't stock it has the uh, larger asnm uh, large tube intake runners and i also have uh, aluminum full roller rockers underneath the valve covers which also take up room allow less room for moving the valve covers around when you go to take them off and they will not clear those runners. So I got to take off the plenium and the intake runners, which is a real pain in the butt on this car. And uh, just to remove the valve covers and inspect the valve train. Uh, the other thing bad about that is uh, you can't like test run the motor with the valve covers off unless you entirely put that in, take the valve, totally remove the intake runners and the plenium and then remove the valve covers and then put all the intake back together again then you'd have to run it find it if you find anything and or not you're gonna have to put the take it back out again take it apart again put the valve covers on and yeah then put the intake back together again it's so i'm not going to do that i'm going to take it apart i'm going to inspect the valve train uh best i can if i can find anything it could be just the those hydraulic lifters need adjustment. Those are LS7 lifters, and they use a lot more preload than a regular hydraulic lifter. It probably just it could be they just need to be tightened up uh, or something else. But that'll be another video. In the meantime, uh, everybody have a great day and God bless.